Oh, hello. Um, yeah, another session of uh, EAA with an 8-inch uh, CPC-800, which is an 8-inch McCaskerain telescope on an out azimuth mount. Um, my name's Pete, and uh, we're on the Isle of Wight, which is an island off the south coast of uh, the UK. Um, and I'm just uh, doing a stack of um, NGC-5053, which is a globular cluster. Um, it's quite a faint, and write this right here. Sorry, I put my cursor in the wrong place. It's um, it's quite a faint globular cluster. It's very sparse. This is um, Stellarium. This is showing uh, the deep space image. If I take it off and just see the image, it is quite a sparse cluster, globular cluster. Uh, distance fifty seven thousand light years. Um, the reason I'm looking at it actually is because on uh, cloudy nights there was a, an, an article. Which has been there for a long time, actually. Um, I think I got rid of it, but let's let's go and have a little look. Here, yeah, this one here, which was um, unique binary globular cluster delivered by the Sagittarius dwarf spheroidal galaxy. M53 and NGC 5053. And the article goes on to um, present evidence that these two globular clusters, M53 and NGC uh, 5053, um, actually originate from this dwarf galaxy that is being, well, consumed by uh, our galaxy, which is, of course, considerably bigger. It's being ripped apart. And, and all this evidence was put together, and, and here's a great image of M53 and NGC 5053. We're currently on this one. My telescope hasn't got the field of view. My, kind of, my telescope's field of view actually fits in between those two. Um, and the distance, the real distance between them, is 4,500 light years. But um, this article goes on to talk about, obviously, their similarities in their makeup, also the fact that they, the kind of... Um, gravitational bridge, a tidal bridge between them and a common envelope, I suppose, of stars and things. So it all kind of um, matches up that these do actually uh, either have had an interaction or are still interacting. Even so much as M53 is coming towards us and NGC 5053 is going away, almost as if they are spinning around each other. So I wanted to, um, I wanted to take a look at that tonight. And so I've looked at NGC 5053 been doing that for about four minutes now. Um, oh, I didn't do that. Yeah. And it's, um, yeah. There's something there. Hang on a second. Let's, um, let's do a plate solve. Great thing about um, Sharp Cap is it's got deep sky imitation. So let's see if we can... Uh, See, because there seems to be a fuzzy thing right there. Let me see if there's something. Oh, it's a galaxy. There we go. So here's NGC 5053. And as you see within the framework of here, we've got loads of galaxies. So that is a 16.2 galaxy. There, there's a 17.4 there. A 17.8 I can see up there. A 17 over there. 17.7 is there. So if I just... Um, Come in a bit, you might be able to see the the fuzziness. Oops, the fuzziness here, the little fuzzy object here, which is a galaxy. And let's come back out. In fact, let's just do auto and have done with it. There you go. So annotation in Stark Sharp Cap, very good. So it's quite interesting now because now you notice these things and you go, ah. Oh, because if I look at my Stellarium program, I don't see anything there. I can see in the image that there is right there, uh, but it's not marked at all in Stellarium. Um, but it is, thankfully, in sharp cap. So, so that was quite interesting. It's um, there's the globular, and that's the next brightest. Oh, it's sixteen point two. Sorry, sixteen point two. Did I say seventeen? Or some of the others are 17. Yeah, it's good. Let's get rid of that. 
Oh, we've just got a... Oh, I haven't got the satellite trailing off, have I? No, it's, it's on. So we've got a little satellite trail going through the moon. Maybe you can't quite see it. It's very faint. In fact, there's one, two, three. Intriguing. Bit of building taking place now. I think we're going to leave that um, because even though it's a sparse, it's quite interesting. Let's go to M53, which is slightly more um, more globular, as we <laughs> more as what you would have thought a globular looked like. So there's M53, um, and uh, if we come out and go into my mode and we change that. Oh, this is too much. Let's go for a second. And then we'll slew over to M53. There we come. Let's give our field of view slightly better. So this again is 58,000 light years away. Uh, you can't see much because I'm going to stretch my image to see it. I, oops, I suspect. Oh, there it is. So it's right here in the center there. Um, let's just move it a little bit more central. Only on four times sidereal speed. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, that's okay. Let's observe. We'll go to, um, let's get rid of that. We'll go to, uh, which we, what were we on before? Four seconds, let's go to four seconds. Let's get the filtering down a bit because it's obviously, uh, we're not really. Hmm. Four seconds, not enough. We'll just try again. Let's back off now then because we're going to be... Oh, that's quite interesting. It's Bring it here again. Let's come and balance it a little bit better. I had this earlier on and I was getting a lovely um, peak over here somewhere. And all of a sudden now it's shifted, and I'm not 100% sure why. But I have noticed that. And it could just be easily that something has come in front on. I do actually have a whole sky. Well, I say whole sky. I have a larger view here. So uh, this is um, Arcturus right here. And this is Ursa Major. So you've got to uh, follow the tail or the handle of the plough if you want down to Arcturus and I've got the pointers going up to the pole star. There is a few hot pixels here. There's no dark frame, sorry. Um, there's some clouds down here in the bottom coming up. But I don't see, up here's Lyra in Vega. I don't see anything really obstructing it. So I'm not 100% sure why that is. Let's move up the red a bit to match. Slim 53, 58,000 light years. Now this one, the red shift, it's actually moving towards us according to the article. And um, also, if I think if I click on here, that's a stop. If I click somewhere on where we are, there we go. Three. Yes, it's got a negative, a negative redshift, so it's coming towards us, while the other one we just saw was going away from us. Not using any flats or darks as usual on this one tonight. It's um, we're using hot pixel removal only. Um, 
dithering and gradient removal. And you can see by these um, the lines around here that it's being moved quite a bit tonight. I'm not sure we're actually 100% focused, but I say that every one of them. There you go, M53. I suppose it's just quite interesting to think that it's part of, it's been ripped off another galaxy and is now part of ours, but I, I believe that happens to uh, many stars and so on, and there have been many smaller galaxies that have come under the influence of our galaxy, the Milky Way, and have been unfortunately gobbled up. Or fortunately, maybe, for us, makes our galaxy bigger, I suppose. But uh, it's always quite interesting, interesting, sorry, thinking about that. I was looking up how globular clusters form because I wondered um, how it was, and obviously they're very old, some of them, some of them 13 billion years old. So some of the oldest objects before maybe even the galaxy was fully formed, um, and they seem to have um, formed out of large molecular clouds because they're you know, balls of 100,000 stars, 200,000 stars. They're, there's you know, there's a lot of stars in them, and but they seem to be very metal poor because they formed out of the original kind of hydrogen and helium in the universe. So very old, maybe. And they seem to have certain populations in them, certain layers of populations in them, as one set has died, the others have been formed from the the dust that's been, sorry, the, the gas, dust and gas that's been returned into their clusters. I think there's about 150 known which orbit around our, our galaxy but obviously we can't see the far side of our galaxy so much so there could be a lot more than we that we don't know about but some obviously do originate from these galaxies that we have managed to eat up over the billions of years so m53 nice that's the three minutes and one second so far so not very much. Uh, I can adjust this a bit more just to make a more pleasing image. Oh, there's a little. What's up over there then? Oh, some stars. So those stars are, are starting to cast a little um, light, I suppose, coming into the corner with the telescope. Let's come out and just decide what we're going to do next. The Black Eye Galaxy. M64. No, we didn't. Let's put M64 in. Whoops. M64. to M64. So now, as they say, for something completely different. So we've gone from globular clusters, which are 58,000 light years away, to um, M64, which I'm going to distance on, but I've looked that up. But it's also called the Black Eye Galaxy, or the Sleeping Beauty Galaxy, apparently. Um, and you'll see why it's called the Black Eye Galaxy in a minute. So what I would do is I'll come into fine mode Change my exposure down back down to two seconds or something. Stretch the image. We need to write a script that does all of this rather than just a bit of it. And let's uh, slew to the Black Eye Galaxy. And there we go. And let's go in a bit. And we've arrived, and there is the Black Eye Galaxy. Come in a bit further. Let's do the DSS view of it in Stellarium. I think we're very old. Uh, so it's right here. So we're slightly off tonight. I, I really didn't... Um, I wasn't in my normal, I love to make aligned stars. So I only did four, which is unusual. I usually do six, sometimes more. As I said, I do enjoy aligning my stars, building my model. I'm going to say we're there. Um, let's go into uh, 
times it applied. And uh, reset this. Change this up to, I don't know, oh, not 15 seconds. What do you think we are doing? Do you think we're doing astrophotography or something? No. Eight seconds we go for. So there we go. So there's our, our straight thing. So we've got um, the black eyed, black eyed galaxy, and I suppose it's gets its name from it's kind of black dust lanes around the core. Oh, we're not really uh, doing so well. I don't want to bother too much. Oh, we're back again now. Let's bring it down again a bit. We're doing eight second exposures now. We've done three. So now we're dithering. So while we dither, let's um, color balance. So I just clicked on the sliders and then I'm just using the arrow keys just to so we can stretch it a bit more. Lots of noise. Fifty six seconds. Uh, the brightness just dropped. Brightness is coming back up. Let's take a look at our wide field camera. We are relative. Oh, we're low down, aren't we? So we're over here somewhere. That may be here. So we're maybe down here. And there's some clouds. Do you see some clouds? There's some. It's very hard to see, but there's some faint clouds coming through this area here. In fact, you see it in the light area, maybe over here. If I zoom in, you can see that there's some clouds there, and that extends. If I see it all the way through here, so that's what caused our brightness to dip, and was detected by the by the brightness um, filter in SharpCat. Cool. So there we go, we're starting to get, I can see the definite dust lane there. Let's zoom back in so we can see it here. Oh, and let's uh, flip it because well, it's got flips east-west. So we see this kind of cloud above it, it's the same cloud as here with the very bright nucleus. And you can see there's some rings coming off of it. And there's the first ring just to make out the second, and there's a bit of a third ring. The start of one over here. So we've got 15 um, frames, two minutes worth of data so far. You can see, oh, there's another meteor, not oh, meteor, sorry, satellite. You can see these marks here, these are um, dust. There's the ones up there. And you can see the venetting where the corners are much darker. Um, this black stuff which is here, which these kind of black bars are forming is because I'm dithering and also um, there could be some rotation, but the Black Eye Galaxy is at 267. So it's it's west um, and field rotation doesn't really matter, especially at this altitude. So it's not really good. This is caused by the dithering, I, sus I suspect moving these 20 pixels, this random walk that SharpCat takes the camera on to try and reduce the noise in the background. Lots of stars, isn't there? 
I mean, I have really stretched this sucker just to um, see it more. So we're on 22 frames now. No darks or flats as usual. Just hot pixel removal, a bit of dithering and some gradient removal. Let's just zoom in a little bit. A bit, there we go, 100%. So yeah, we can see there's a ring here, and we see this kind of bright ring here. And then there's another start of one over here, which I think is that one on that image. Got these stars here. Got to remember, it's what's the time now? It's ten to midnight here, um, so there is no astronomical darkness. Uh, the sun's still too, still just below the horizon. So nautical twilight ended at twenty three eleven, but there's no real astronomical darkness. So. 32, so we've got 4 minutes and 16 seconds stacked so far. And we can definitely start to see that there is some structure forming here. There is something there as well. Something on the edge. Why? No, we're going dither. I don't want to interrupt a dithering. So this dithering is finished. Let's um, let's see if there's anything. No, nothing there. There is some other galaxy out here. There's a 17.8, which might be there. It's hard to tell. Let's move out a bit more. Don't see that one at 17. Uh, that's interesting actually. I don't think that's right. Um, there's a galaxy there and then there's a circle here. I'm going to do another one. I'm going to do another plate solve and see if that ellipse there jumps to here. Yeah, it does. I've noticed that. I've noticed that. I was zoomed in there and um, it didn't match up properly. But if you come back out so you see the full picture and then to a, 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 a plate solve. So now, yeah, so now I can see with these galaxies, they are actually inside the ellipses and that one there. Oh yeah, there's loads of galaxies here. 17.8 um, is the, um, yep, I see 17.8. 17.7 up there, can't see that one, it's right on the edge. A ring galaxy, 17.3, yeah, can see that one. Yes, yeah, can see you, you're a, I don't know what you are, but you're a spiral. 17, 16.7. So again, even though, like I said, it's it's astronomical, it's it's um, it's not going to be astronomical um, twilight. They believe, and it's it's just not dark. You can see galaxies down to magnitude um, oh, seventeen point three, seventeen point eight. On a telescope that visually, if you're in optimum um, conditions, dark skies would be fourteen point two, maybe. Though my eyes are quite old, so who knows? 
what I would see visually. Um, most probably, you might be able to see a bit more, who knows, but um, definitely this is quite impressive. I'll just get rid of that now. So we are making some headway. Still quite noisy. We have done six minutes and 56, 52 frames. Did I bring it up too much? No, that's ruined everything. There's a satellite gone straight through the middle of it, the top of it, sorry. Up here, sorry. The top of the frame. It's getting there. I'm starting to see more. Zoom in again. It's not bad. Come a bit, I think. Yeah. Let's try and zoom in a little bit more. Look at these. I mean, these are globular clusters. All of this, all of these yellow dots are all globular clusters, and they, as you see, as I approach, looking more and more towards the centre of our galaxy, which is over here they because they orbit around the center of our galaxy then you can see them i mean they're here i mean so orphicus and sagittarius are the main places for globular clusters um, there's m5 maybe we should um to M5 in a second on the way through south yeah we'll go to M5 first and then we'll look at all those clusters of galaxies down here um, now this cluster there is at altitude of 33 degrees you know we're at 65 frames Come back out. I'm going to save a scene and go back into fine mode. Change that to uh, a second. Now we wanted to do uh, M5, wasn't it? So we'll change that to M5 and we will slew to M5. Five is that five circles? Isn't it? Yeah, so that's the star here. It's the same as the star, obviously here, right next to M five, which is slightly off. We do actually. Is this going to go? Chalk it up a bit. Didn't go quite as high as the. Yeah, let's go into observe mode. Let's set it at uh, four seconds. Actually, let's do that again. Go to four seconds. And turn off the. Um... Oh, wow. Let's 
that'd be better. Six seconds, and we'll try that again. Okay, let's go to eight seconds. And we'll do that again. So what I'm trying to do is, um, I'm trying to um, auto color balance from star colors. And when I try that, it tells me there isn't enough stars. And there we go. Cannot calculate stars because less than five stars in the saturation right range 15% to 95%. Is this just a Okay, I'm gonna go for 10 second exposures then. Let's start that again. Is it because it's too, the stars are too dim? I said, I mean, that tonight they're having a few interesting problems. I suppose what I should do is go out there and turn the, t <laughs> turn the camera off because I had a few interesting things before we came on where the image I was getting was a bit weird. But it seemed to correct itself, so I let it roll. Yeah, 10 seconds seems to be the way to go. So now if I do my star, that's still saying. going on now one day. Um, actually if I zoom because I think that will give me a better it's very spaced out You all right? Sorry, the dog's here. You okay? You all right, little one? He's not actually that little. Oh, you mate. No. So this is a much more impressive globular cluster, and it's much bigger than the ones we were on for. Looks like we just didn't have enough. But we didn't have enough um, exposure or gain, whichever way you want to look at, look at it. But I don't want to increase read noise by. Well, I don't think I do. Maybe I should. Let's go and take a quick look at the sky. Oh, 
neighbour's light's just gone on. It's illuminating the telegraph pole right there. So we're stacking, we've got 14 frames uh, stacked right now. Our stars might be wobbling a bit. What are we at now? Uh, we are at 32 degrees and obviously descending. The last three have failed. Let's see what the fourth one's going to do. Oh, it's all right. Let's have a go with that. So 15 frames, 2 minutes 30. Might have a little bit of dithering there just to. And we're at 24 and a half thousand. So it's actually much nearer than the ones we were looking at before as well. So it explains most probably why it's so much bigger and brighter. Could try some enhancements on this one. Let's try and unshut Mars, see what happens. Off. On. Yeah, how about the old Rhino deconvolution? Personal, I think it definitely darkened the background. Because I can bring this up a bit more now. Wow. I mean, that's an impressive globular cluster, isn't it? M5. Which one's the query? Is it around there? Yeah. Let's go to Wikipedia. So it's got a radius of 80 light years. Wow. Estimated age is 10.6 billion years. They're old, you see, very old. Yeah. M5. Looks pretty good to me. Well, that's four minutes. We are, um, let's move on. More and more globulars. Uh, Eagle Nebula, 25 degrees. Ten sixteen. I think it is time to move on, so we're just going to save exactly as seen. Um, let's pause the stack a second, and then we'll bring this time back down to something more reasonable, like a second. Uh, we'll go into fine mode, which will get rid of all that, and we will. Slew it. 
So let's go over to any of this. So we're so far, I've looked around the halo of our galaxy and looked at some globular clusters. We're now we looked at a galaxy, the Black Eye Galaxy, and now we're going to head into deep into our own galaxy, which is the Eagle Nebula, seven thousand light years away, an open cluster and a dark nebula. Shall we just? Um... So here's the cluster. Let's zoom in. Let's do our little flip so we know what we're doing. Uh, so the cluster's slightly low. So let's take the cluster up a bit. I don't think I'm balanced right on the scope. It keeps on going up a bit. Excellent. I think we're there. So I'm going to do what I did just now. I'm going to do a 10 second. And we'll go into observe mode. Get rid of the stretch on that. Oh, we zoomed in, haven't we? Let's zoom back out so we can see what's going to happen. I'm going to do a 10 second exposure. I have a game. Oh, I thought it was doing it too high. Let's just take the filter off a second. We're much lower than we were before. Oh, look at that. Straight in. So, first frame, you can see the nebulosity of this red, and you can actually even see the dark, the pillars of creation. Famous. Oh, look at that. That, that went down really well. It's right here. You can see it. So, lovely. Let's wait for the next frame to pop in. And as you can see, you can actually see the, the noise falling away a bit. Next frame. Yep, yeah, getting better all the time. Let's come back out a little bit. We were quite zoomed in then. We haven't done any adjustments yet for Let's just change it to auto. Six frames. Now Auto colour balance from stars wasn't really worth waiting for on that. And if anyone likes lilac, I think, or purple, that's that's um, that's perfect. Let's try just a uh, try and balance it on the histograms. Peaks. Oh, someone likes green. Let's get the red up. dithering. Ah, it doesn't like changing things on the dither either. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? Oh, this is going to take forever. Why can't I get that? I suppose. Come up a little bit. Get the red balance up. Too much. Too little. Okay. Let's zoom in and do it. Isn't working very well. Hmm. Just the dark.
zoom in a bit. Impressive. Yeah, not going my light color, my light balance right. So, not sh something went a bit wrong earlier on, and I didn't bother. You know, it's the classic mistake. I didn't bother. Go, hey, stop! Let's stop and let's figure out what's going on. But it's just it's not affecting us that much. It's just uh, a bit annoying. Oh, have I still got my enhancement on? I have. Let's turn it off and see what happens. Oh, that might have explained why it was taking so long, actually. Let's put the... Uh, So that's 25 frames, that's 4 minutes and, and 10 seconds. Let's zoom in a bit more, 100%. So there we are at 100%. And the Evil Nebula. I do like the Eagle Nebula. Let's see, 22 degrees high. I mean, the one we're on is how high? 25. Patchy unnamed cloud. <laughs> Stay a bit of a bit. How are we doing? Thirty four frames done. No, I'm thinking Amiga. M17, I'm not sure if I've got M17 in the last of oh, let's put it in. We're at 6 minutes and 10 seconds, let's come out a little bit. Can't move it that way anymore. Get a little bit of 
overview of the dark lanes. So 40, 40 frames have been stacked. These are 10 second exposures, 900 gain. It's quite a beautiful sight. Seeing some faint luminosity down here. These dark clouds. This quite sort of things move in a bit more because I'm able to do right in the center of this nebula. It is good. Yeah, I'm thinking about going to the Amiga nebula. Just for a look see. It's just sometimes it's hard to leave an object and go, well, let's have a look of it looking at it. So it's kind of structure these dark holes and lines up here. It's very impressive. Well, let's save it. Let's pause the stack and um, go back to a second. Back into fine mode. Uh, we're at the Amiga Nebula, aren't we? So we're going to. Oh, where have we gone? Oh, it's over to the top. Uh, we'll set that and we will. Down to the Amiga, past the patchy unknown cloud according to Stellarium, which I do love. Did you see the patchy unknown cloud last night? Oh, straight away, even at one second, I can see nebulosity right there. Uh, let me go up a bit. Up a bit more, maybe. Come across. A bit too much, but okay. Let's take this to uh, ten seconds again, and let's go into observe mode. Take off the stretch. I think our stars are moving. All right, I'm going to do that again. Got the distinct impression we were still. St are we still moving? No. So this is um, M17, the Amiga Nebula, also known as the Swan Nebula. Okay. And. Um, Let's zoom in, see what we've got here. So we can see all one to one. So we have this central ridge, which is quite bright. And we can have these kind of this kind of tail, which is what's on here. And it also says there's some nebulosity over on this side, and that's that nebulosity right there. So pretty neat. 
23 degrees, which is not high. And we're also um, at 176 degrees, so we're not quite south. And the problem with that is, is there is a light dome from a nearby town in that direction. So we're, we're definitely into some light pollution, a lot of light pollution. But, I have to admit, thanks to EAA, colour up a little bit, thanks to EAA, you can see such an amazing thing as this, even though the town is trying its best to obscure the night sky. Too far across, didn't I? When I did it, but it's pretty much so. The telescope thinks it's there on that star right there. Hmm, we've got a difference. I should think it's there, but it's actually there. I don't think it matters too much. Look at all those stars in our galaxy. Billions of stars. There's clouds. I what the DSS image looks like. Let's have a look at that. Wearing orangey. And it shows a lot more of the nebulosity over here. I can't see it. It does actually come around here, just as it does in that picture there. The brighter bits being these bits. There's a line up there for some reason. I don't know. I can't see that. It's also quite a bright star there. Which, um, in the past, I was getting these definitely these kind of light intrusions on the edge of the screen. So it must just depend where the stars are. Just now, I was getting one when the stars were off the corner, and I was getting a little um, reflection up there. So that's 16 frames. So we've been stacking for 2 minutes and 40 seconds, and there's a lot of noise, but so what? Um, you can see these lovely star clouds. You can see the nebulosity. It's, uh, you know, really exciting. Did I sound excited? Sorry, it's really exciting uh, just how much you can um, see. I mean, this is the same scope I used 13 years ago. Well, for actually 11 years, isn't it? 11 and a half years, visually. So it is quite amazing than what I've seen in the last uh, two and a bit years since putting a camera in front in where the IP should go and using this fantastic software. Uh, it is amazing. Just come back. You right, Forrest? Yeah, he's okay. Good boy. So we're at 22 frames stacked, 3 minutes 40. Just come in a little. Come in a little bit. Make it look like a, a bubble. Right there. Oh yeah, there's this right there. Look at this structure here. Well, this is this distance is five thousand well effectively five thousand five hundred light years, so a little bit closer than the Eagle Nebula we saw at seven thousand. Uh, irregular form, filamentary structure, cluster associated with nebulosity. I'm going to really stretch it somewhat. I could take it down a step or two just to take the noise away. Okay. 
green. Yeah. yeah, that's quite impressive. Colour. No little grey smudge. Colour. Structure. Was that a satellite there? So five minutes now, so usually, um, because if uh, I would be interested, I'd stay a bit longer, 10 minutes, but sometimes more, but 10 minutes. And in 10 minutes time, this image will be even better than it is now. Um, the longer you leave it, the more noise hopefully would come out of it. Oh, there's that little bit. So there's a little bit of nebulosity coming down past this star over here. And I can see it just, just there. here which are look a bit brighter I take it they're the they're new stars for me maybe but the dark lines and things you can see the dark lanes it's very good let's come out again yeah I like that I do like the Amiga Nebula as well now Let's flip it around a bit. I'm not sure what this is over here. Nice little star cluster. I don't think we've got M26, I didn't put it in. Let's put it in. M26, yeah, an open cluster. This is distance, 5,000 light years. Ooh, strange, isn't it? Almost the same as the Omega Nebula. I'm thinking that's good enough. I'm gonna save exactly the scene. Let's pause the stack on that. Um, We'll go back to our quick pick of seconds um, and we'll go into file mode. Just gets rid of everything, saves it all, and gets ready for the next shot. Uh, we're going to go to M26 and let's get M26 up. And let's slew to M26. And let's oh, exposure of ten seconds. I thought I did a quick pick of one. There we go. So here we go. We seem to have a star cluster right here. Uh, let me do a quick pick of half a second. Just take these. Moving still, isn't it? Still moving slightly outwards. Let me stop now. Uh, okay, let's do a ten second exposure. 
let's go into observe mode with M26. Let's see what we should see. That's what we should see. Let's flip it so it's exactly what we see. Oh well, do I not take down the... Oh, I did not. Uh, we're on auto yet. So there we have a cluster set um, in a rich Milky Way. So let's let's look at the image, deep space image of that one. And all you see is stars. Look at the stars. So there we go. Another star. M26. Five thousand light years away. So there's a strong central concentration of stars small brightness range of cluster members, moderately rich cluster with 50 to 100 stars in it. Quite impressive. 10 seconds. So that's a minute exposure. Let's get rid of DSS. I think it looks better as it was there. Ninety seconds worth of exposure. Got an enhancement on still, haven't we? Let's turn the enhancement off a second. Brighter. Let's get the end shut mask on. No. I mean, we did stretch this straight away to see if we come out, we can concentrate more on the cluster itself. No, I think I want to see some stars. Let's really stretch it up a bit. Not the central light spot because we're not using a flat. Yeah, so M26, open cluster. What do we say, 5,000 light years away, do we? Yep, 5,000 light years away. 50 to 100 stars embedded in the huge number of stars that is our galaxy. Let's come out and flip us around again. Uh, M11, I reckon. Now, I love M11. It's one of my favourite clusters. Um, in case it's not already there. Oh, I lost the thing. I had to work on that. Down in the mist, down in the murk, unfortunately. So I save it exactly the same. Um, change my quick pick to half a second. Go to fine mode. Oh, there, it just went straight back. How about that? Half a second. Make it a bit more um, faster. So. M11 we're going to go to next, and uh, let's slew to M11. So wild dark cluster, 6,200 light years. Here we come. We're there. So here's M11. Oh, it seems to be a lack of response tonight. I'm just wondering if my network's a bit 
I notice was it was drifting upwards so there you go uh, let's do another 10 seconds and go to observe mode turn off the stretch Let's wait for our first frame to pop in at an 11. There it is. Let's wait for us. Oh, no. No alignment found. Not enough stars. Okay. Let's highlight the detected stars on the next move. Next frame. Uh, it's really is complaining. Okay, let's come out of live stacking. Under one second, I'm wondering. Oh wow, yeah. Uh, two seconds. Um, I'm just going to do a let's do an automatic refocus and see what happens. Oh wow! Oh look, I mean, just made that a lot worse. Wow. I wonder if there's lots of backlash in this guys <laughs> yeah I, th I think we're miles utterly miles away from our focus now it's good to watch though it's persevering isn't it look at that Refocus failed because couldn't find best focus because it just went straight away from the focus that was actually better. Uh, let's make it uh, let's make it six seconds and let's go into observe mode and let's see if we can find some stars now. 
as one. Let's see if we can align it. Yeah. So we were completely out of um, focus. I'm only doing six. Oh, sorry. Let's turn off the. I'm only doing six seconds. Oh, on the alignment. I said, which stars you're aligning under here? Still that many. So I'm saying it's just not responding tonight on these. That does it. I'll take the colour down a bit because it seemed quite high. Sounds like a helicopter going overhead. Something here, satellite or something. There's some clouds over here. There's definitely a satellite here of some kind. Looks like it's spinning because you can see the little lights on it. Nice. It's the first night I put out an ASI, a little ASI 120, just to see what's going on. Wow, you see, and this is the reason. Now, that to me has the form of a little bit of cluster, but it, um, more than 100 stars, uh, 6,197 light years away. Medium brightness range of cluster, and a strong central concentration of stars. Looking extremely globular like. M11. I think um, for the stream, we'll leave it there. So, thank you for coming along for the ride. Sorry things don't go always right. Uh, 